He's on a heavenly frequency. And when you're dead to sin, you can tune in. Amen. And you can sense in your spirit God himself. You don't want to be like Jacob. Jacob, after he wrestled with God, he said, God was in this place and I didn't even know. <laughs> you don't want to be like that. Amen. Even though I must acknowledge all of us probably have been there. Let's resolve never to be there again. Because that's deadness toward God. Paul says of the cross of Christ, he said, I glory in the cross of Christ. I glory in it. I see something in the cross that the normal person doesn't see. I glory in the cross by whom, not by which. Some people quote that Galatians 6, 14. God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of Christ by which. But that's not what it says. It says by whom. It's the Christ on the cross. That's the whom. By whom I am crucified to the world. And the world is crucified to me. The world and I have an agreement. I don't like it. It doesn't like me. And if you're living in Christ, the world doesn't like you either. Do we think it does? It doesn't. Jesus said, if you were of the world, the world would love you. But you're not of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. But he said it hated me before it hated you. What makes that happen? It's identity with Christ. It's dying to the world. When someone is infirm in body and they're about ready to pass out of this life, the things of the world aren't too important. A person's on their deathbed, they're gasping out their last breath, I can tell you they're not going to call for someone and say, how's the stock market today? They could care less how the stock market was today. Now the question is, are they in the right mind or are people who are concerned in the right mind? I'm telling you, the person who thinks like that is closer to being like God than the person that doesn't. They are losing, a person in Christ is losing his attraction to the world and gaining an attraction to heaven. That's what dying with Christ involves. Now the scripture says that those that are in Christ have crucified the flesh. Now here again is a resting passage of scripture. The Lord doesn't pull his punches here. It's Galatians 5, 24. And you can gauge yourself by this text. This is like a ruler. You lay it alongside your life. Nobody else has to judge you in this. This is strictly a thing you do. You do it yourself. They that are Christ's have crucified the flesh and its affections and lusts. Amen. Now notice what this text says. They that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its affections and lusts. It does not say they that are Christ ought to crucify the flesh. That's how it often is preached. That's not what it says. If a person belongs to Christ, if a person is in Christ, if a person is born again, they are at work subduing their sinful nature. Amen. They are crucifying it, refusing to let it have domination. They that are Christ fail crucified the flesh. That's the natural part of you. That's the sinful part of you. That's the part of you that hasn't been born again. And there is a part of you that has not been born again. You know that, don't you? Everybody that's been born again kept their old nature. It's chained to you. Part of you is pulling down, part of you is pulling up. And when you crucify the flesh, you keep the old part down. Though well, sometimes we have thoughts, it, it surprises you that you have them. How could I have thought something like that? That's the old part of you that you're to crucify. And uh, crucify is not synonymous with kill. You remember that thief? Two thieves were crucified with Christ. One of them repented, one didn't. The one that didn't, he was raining on Jesus. Now, he was crucified, but he wasn't dead. He was spouting off to Jesus. He was saying, if you can save yourself, save us also. And he was challenging him. Your flesh is like that. The sinful part of you is like that. It's challenging you to listen. But you keep it crucified. And if you're Christ, you will. Amen. Amen. So you gauge yourself where you're at by that. Here it is again, Romans, the sixth chapter. Uh, and verse six tells us that uh, those that are in Christ that are, are dead to the world. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. Not it ought to be. That's not what it says. It says it is. When every person is born again, and they come up, so to speak, out of the baptism, they come up with their old nature nailed to a cross. That's how it starts out. A person starts out that way in Christ, with his flesh nailed to the cross. Now it's up to him to keep it there. 
they that are Christ's. Keep it there. Galatians 2.20, I like this text. I am crucified with Christ. Not I ought to be. Note what these texts are saying. I am crucified with Christ. Yet I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God that loved me and gave himself up. I'm asking you tonight, are you crucified with Christ? Have you died with Christ? Have you? So I haven't thought about that. Think about it. You can't leave here without thinking about this. Have I died with Christ? If I have, I will live with him. That's a promise. God's made a promise here. If we die with him, we will live with him. Amen. But if you have not died with him, you don't stand a chance of going to him. Not a chance. God will not back up on this. God is a loving God. He is. He wants all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. He does. He is not willing that any should perish, but all that come to repentance. He, that's the way God is. But he cannot and he will not let anybody in heaven that has not died to sin. Amen. That has not developed a distaste for sin. That has said, I don't want to sin anymore. I hate it. God help me to come away from it. And until that frame of spirit comes, the wrath of God abides upon a person. If you are dead, well, let's just read it from Scripture. Colossians, the third chapter. I'm going to ask you to reason on this, whether you're dead with Christ or not. If then you're risen with Christ, seek the things that are above. Where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For you are dead. And your life is hid with Christ in God. Now, folks, there are some things above. God doesn't ask you to set your affection on something that's not there. There are some things above. Wonderful things above. That are for us. And if you're dead, you can want them. You can long for them. You can ask God to give them to you. Set your affection on those things. Not affections. <coughs> affection. Singular. Set your ambition on that. To obtain the prize. Make it your goal. Make it your aim. That when you die, and you will die. That when you die, you will be received into the heavenly abode. Because you've developed an appetite. What does it mean to set your affection on things above? It means culture and appetite for it. You will have as much of heaven as you want. Amen. No limit. Uh, we talk about this once in a while about people, you know, there's a song that says, Lord, build me a cabin in the corner of glory land. If anyone was going to sing that during this meeting, please don't do it. Because I don't want a cabin in the corner of glory land. I'll be right up front with you. And if you do, you've got some real problems. <laughs> now you're out of it. Because there aren't any cabinets in glory. That's right. There's only mansions there. Amen. The cities there. The city of the living God is there. It's an entire thing called a temple. Yeah, there's no small things there, but you have to have culture and appetite for it. That's what uh, fellowship and church and preaching, that's what it's all about. To develop an appetite for these things. Now to do that, you have to die to this world. You have to, your appetite for this world has to wane. Pretty soon you aren't so excited about what you can get here, and you are very excited about what you can get there. Now you're making some genuine progress. We are dead to the law. This is Romans 7, verse 4. We are dead to the law through the body of Christ. Now, one time, we were all married to the law. It was a terrible husband. It was not good to us. Beat us condemned us. We had to get away from this law, but we were by nature wedded to the law. And just anyone who lives in sin is riveted to the law. The law is their husband. Condemning him all the time. But in Christ, praise God, we die to the law.